Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to lesson one of computer applications here at Waldo Middle School. I'm Mr. Blumendahl and this is lesson number one and today's lesson is going to answer the very simple question what is a computer? You might think you know what a computer is but we actually have some definitions that we want you to know for class because you're going to take a test on this. What is a computer? Well, quite simply, a computer is an electronic device operating under the control of instructions stored in its own memory that can accept data, also known as input, process the data according to specified rules, this is known as a process or processing, produce results, which we call output, and store the results, which we call storage, for future use. So there are four major functions of a computer you can see there. There's input, process, output, and storage. What does a computer do? This is going to sound remarkably familiar after what I just said. There are four basic operations that a computer does. The first is input. An input is any entry of data that comes from outside the computer. So when you're typing on a keyboard, you are giving the computer input. That's the best example. Uh, and those inputs can be uh, instructions such as commands, or they can simply be entering data into a Microsoft Word document or a spreadsheet. Process. Uh, the computer is designed to process information. So there is something called the central processing unit, which we also call the CPU, and this is the brain or heart of the computer. The entire reason we use computers is because they have CPUs, and they can process the information a lot faster than we can ourselves. Output is the data after it has been processed. So if your input is to put together a Microsoft Word document, your output would be pressing print and seeing the final copy come out of the printer. And then storage. Storage is very important. Um, this involves memory, uh, and this is where you store data. So some examples of things that we store on a computer would be pictures, MP3s uh, and uh, video games that are applications that are actually on the computer's hard drive would get stored on the computer as well. These are all things that take up the computer's memory. Here's a diagram of how a computer operates. What are the parts of the computer? First part of the computer we need to know is the input, which we see over here on the left. Uh, input goes into the central processing unit, um, which contains something called an ALU, or an arithmetic logic unit. And the um, main part of the computer also provides the control. Uh, memory can be both inside the computer, built into it, and it can be outside the computer. We can use flash drives, we can use CDs or DVDs, and we also have something outside the computer called the cloud, um, which is where we also store things. That's kind of a new thing over the last five or so years. And then we use the computer for the most part to give us output. We put things into the computer, and the computer gives us things that we want. We're going to go in, into that in a lot more detail uh, in the next part of the lesson. So what types of things can provide input into the computer? The keyboard is an example I've already given you. The mouse uh, was a brilliant invention. Uh, helps us to manipulate what's going on on the screen. Uh, a digital camera can definitely provide input in the computer. You plug it in and the pictures magically pop up on the screen and you can manipulate them using the computer. A microphone is actually providing input to this computer right now. I'm using a remote microphone to record this YouTube lesson. A scanner 
So you can scan documents and scan pictures and they can be digitized. That provides input. And a touchpad, um, which laptops often have. So there's your keyboard. There's your mouse. There's your digital camera. There's your microphone. And there's your scanner and your touchpad. All of those things are incredibly useful in providing input to a computer. So we also have devices that provide output from the computer. Printer is the most important example in terms of our school setting because we always like to print things here. Uh, there are two different kinds of printers. There's the inkjet printer and the laser printer. Laser printers are more accurate. There's also display devices. The monitor is an output device on your computer. That's how we interpret what the computer is telling us is by looking at what it shows on the monitor. Uh, there are two different types of monitors. There's the old school type of monitor that looks more like a box. That's a CRT monitor, which stands for cathode ray display. And then in the last five years or so, uh, most people have switched over to using the flat panel or LCD, the liquid crystal display monitors, which give a more precise image and they also um, just look nicer. There's a printer. There's another printer. The inkjet on the left, the laser printer on the right. There's two different types of monitors. I would say the flat panel on the right looks much more appealing. So, what things make up the central processing unit? Well, there's the control unit which directs the flow of the program or the data. It basically tells the data and the program what to do. And then there's the arithmetic logic unit, which for now on we will call the ALU. Any math or computing is done there. Oops, we should go back to that. And you know what? I think this is a great place to stop lesson number one and move on to lesson number two. If you're going to continue um, with this PowerPoint, you can just do the next video. And if you're good for now or good for the day, uh, this would be a great place to stop. We hope you've enjoyed lesson one of computer applications with Mr. Blumendahl.